أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. We now move on to the actual conquest of Mecca. It was the greatest event by which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala honored His religion, the Messenger, Muslims, and thereby rescued the sacred house, the Kaaba. It was the most significant prelude to a new era that was to witness the great march and the entry of people into the fold of Islam in huge multitudes. So let's see the events that took place before the conquest of Mecca. The peace treaty now seemed to greatly favor the Muslims. Islam was reaching to other areas of the world. According to the terms of this treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Arab tribes were given the option to join either of the parties, the Muslims or the Quraysh, to enter into a treaty alliance. In this light, Banu Bakr joined Quraysh and Quza'ah joined the Prophet It is important to know about Banu Quza'ah. They were one of the legendary tribes of Quraysh and they had a history with the Banu Hashim. For over 300 years, they were the custodians of the Kaaba, which was a huge honor. But after that, Quraysh took it over from the Quza'a. The other tribe was the Banu Bakr, and they were one of the few pagan tribes in Mecca. The Quza'a and Banu Bakr both were located on the outskirts of Mecca. This alliance occurred in the sixth year of the Hijra. The Quza'a and the Banu Bakr had warfare for the last hundred years. The Treaty of Hudaybiyah came and both tribes chose their sides. Thus, they lived in peace for some time, but the fire of revenge was there to trigger the new conflicts. Despite being aware of the peace treaty in Shaban 8 AH, a leader from Banu Bakr held hostility towards Khuza'a and wanted to launch an attack. For this, Banu Bakr sought help from the Quraysh, who helped them with men and weapons. Fighters of Banu Bakr took advantage of the darkness of the night and launched a surprise raid against Khuza'a and a spring near Mecca. Armed men of Bakr killed more than 20 people of the Khuza'a tribe that included men, women, as well as children. One of the men of Khuza'a tribe fled to the sacred area of Kaaba, seeking sanctuary but here too their lives were not spared and contrary to all accepted traditions nawful the chief of banu bakr chased them in the sanctified areas where no blood should be shed he nevertheless murdered his opponent the quraysh and the banu bakr clearly broke the treaty of al hudaybiyah just two years after it had been signed the chief of Khuza'a and 40 men traveled to Medina, intending to convey the news to Prophet ﷺ. When the aggrieved party sought justice from their Muslim allies, the Prophet ﷺ, as their leader, demanded an immediate compensation for not only violating the treaty, but also slaying men allied to him in the sacred area. Thus, three demands were made to Quraysh. Number one, to pay blood money for the victims of Khuza'a. Number two, to terminate their alliance with Banu Bakr. Number three, to consider the ceasefire to have been nullified. Quraysh immediately realized the grave situation and feared the horrible consequences looming on the horizon. They immediately called for an emergency meeting and decided to delegate their chief Abu Sufyan to Medina for a renewal of the ceasefire. Abu Sufyan went to see the Prophet ﷺ, but the Prophet was well aware of his tricks, so he did not hold him any assurance. Abu Sufyan then approached Abu Bakr, an, but the latter too declined to interfere. Then he contacted Umar an, to intercede, but his great companion also refused to help. At last, he saw Ali ibn Abi Talib an, and began begging him in the most humble words to intercede for the renewal of the treaty. But Ali an, declined to interfere. Ultimately, 
Abu Sufyan turned his steps back to Mecca in a state of disappointment and told the Meccans about his meeting. They were distressed but did not feel any imminent danger. As Abu Sufyan returned to Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ announced that he will lead a very large expedition somewhere and everybody must follow. Every male that is able to go must go and he did not say where. Therefore, the news spread that there would be a massive battle but nobody knew where. A few weeks went by before this happened and the Prophet ﷺ intentionally sent out a small expedition up north as a scouting party to give the false impression that the massive army will go up north. Remember, Mecca is down south. Before heading to Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ told the Muslims about the destination so that everyone could do preparations. Not a single Muslim remained behind in Medina. Everyone participated until eventually the Prophet ﷺ gathered over 10,000 people under his banner. The Prophet ﷺ left Medina on the 10th of Ramadan, 8 AH, and arrived on the outskirts of Mecca on the 19th of Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ did not want to give any hint to the enemies anyways. That is why he announced it right before they left. It was at this point in time one of the famous Sahabi Hatib ibn Abi Balta an, was concerned about his family who was in Mecca that they may not be safe if the battle occurs. So he secretly paid a woman who was traveling to Mecca to deliver a letter to Quraysh containing indication of the intended attack. She took the letter and hid it in the braids of her hair. The Prophet ﷺ received news from the heaven of Hatib's action. So the Prophet ﷺ sent Ali an and a friend to go to a specific place just outside of Medina where they would find a caravan and retrieve the letter from the woman. They went out and found her precisely as Angel Jibreel had described to the Prophet ﷺ. Ali an and his friend demanded from her the letter. She denied that she had it. They searched through her things but could not find the letter. After a long search, they discovered the letter carefully hidden in her locks. The Prophet ﷺ summoned Hatib an and asked him what had induced him to this act. The Prophet ﷺ accepted his excuse and granted him forgiveness. So it is important to understand, Hatib had a reason for doing that, although his reasoning was wrong, but it was not kufr or disbelief. With this, we come to the end of today's session. Inshallah, we will meet next time and we will discuss other events that took place during the journey to Mecca. Stay tuned and Jazakallahu Khair. Please don't forget to press the like button and subscribe to our channel Zil Noreen. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.